told you, I told you, I told you. I told you, I told you, I told you. I can't tell you how many people were so excited about Daredevil Born Again and Daredevil and Born Again and Netflix and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, nope, can't, won't, zero interest. And then we get She-Hulk. We get this horrible, horrible backhanded version of a Daredevil in the She-Hulk show. And now we have another person um, speaking about original Daredevil stuntman says Marvel Studios, quote, told everyone, every person working on that show, they don't want Born Again to look anything like the Netflix series. <sighs> oh, I wish I was surprised. Um, Bounty New Comics has the in the latest but not unsurprising confirmation. See, they know. They know. Uh, absolutely no connection with the heroes proving it. Yeah, absolutely. They're gonna they're they're treating the MCU as a different universe anyway. I would be shocked if they didn't just come out and give the Netflix universe a number, so therefore it was designated to be its own thing. But they don't want that because they want to try to make sure you feel like they're the same because they want to save people and blah blah. They want their cake and eat it too. Um Let's see. This is a Hollywood stuntman, Corey Brewster, who's notably the stunt double for Chris Evans in Winter Soldier and Charlie Cox in Daredevil. So this is actually Brewster. So Brewster is um, the huge, huge player in all of this, right? He is on the um, Akuzo Unscripted podcast. This is the, the, the 20, June 21st. Here's the show. They have the link to the entire show, which, you know, which would be kind of a fun thing to kind of go through, but I don't want to spend that much time doing it. Um, and you can look at this guy. Look at this guy. He just looks like a Chad, man. Just looks like a boss. So they're discussing the show. And he says, well, it seems to me, at least to me, there you are, it seems, the go-to guy for Marvel. And talks about the list of things that he's worked on, right? And then down here, it's probably too late to change now. Um, Marvel has told every single person. That's right. They don't want anything to do with it. They don't want anything. He goes, trust me. Not only did I work on the show, but I was one of the biggest fans of the show. I think the Marvel Netflix Daredevil was a masterpiece. Season one is in particular. Season one is in particular. But he's told her, the, the people telling them they do not want it to look anything like their Daredevil series. Why would they? Why would they? What about the Disney product would make you think that they want anything to do with the Netflix version because the only thing they can do will be a watered down generic version thereof, right? They're not going to go for it, right? We're not going to get a raw, gritty crime store with Kingpin grabbing a car door to murder someone. Like It's just not going to happen, right? So instead, we're going to get, um, what is the guy? He is one of the key players. Um, he did a few episodes of Dexter, Six Feet Under, Michael Cuesta, Cuesta. I think it's how you say his name, Cuesta. C-U, yeah, C-U-E-S-T-A. Um, yeah, he's that guy that's going to be kind of, I think, I don't know if they technically are calling them showrunners or not. He worked on Homeland. But I also don't want them to seem like they're like, they're these key players that worked on a ton of these things. They just have a whole bunch of credentials, right? Um, let me see who else is directing. They have Clark Johnson. Clark Johnson is, um, he's been an actor in a whole bunch of things. He, see, he directed, has he done anything? Black sales. He did, but he's, a, he's one of these like, do one, do one episode here, one episode there. He did, he did a couple episodes of Mayor of Kingstown. That's actually promising, right? He had an episode of Taken, Luke Cage. Yeah, see, so, you know, there's different, different directors that are in all of this, but I don't think there's anything um, that's knocking my socks off about um, any of the episodes. I don't think I've seen who is writing most of these episodes. Um, which is really kind of where you have to go. If you really want the nuts and bolts of how this is going to go, um, what they really wanted um, is to get into the quote, are you ready? Are you ready? This is what they said. Um, here, let me pull this up. This actually has made it over on Wikipedia even. Look. Oh, cool. But yeah, I was double checking the link. 
Yeah, Wikipedia even has this. So let me give you that link and we'll read that together. Which, again, you know, you want to have benefit of the doubt, but you just can't with these people, right? Are you ready? Um, this was a quote. Marvel Studios would be able to create a faithful version of the character with those restrictions, meaning they can't, they don't want to do MA. Um, they're going to go with a exciting, relatable, relatable in a darker space, such as what Bentis and Alex Maleev, right? Okay. Now, um, but here we go. A PG comic, right? And then later, um, Feige and Chris Gary is listed as a producer, um, confirmed to be in development. And let's see, technically it'll be the fourth season. We don't believe you because now you're saying, see, this is, this is the game they play. They want it to be your fourth season. But they don't want it to be anything like the first three seasons. So it's not the fourth season. It's season one of another version. So this is the comic books. The comic books want you to buy, you know, amazing Spider-Man six and then bill it as the 900th issue. I'm like, well, no, it's not. It's the sixth issue of your volume eight reboot of crap that you've done because you constantly do these gimmicks. This isn't going to get, the, this is not the fourth season. This is season one. You don't get it both ways. Um, there's people that have, have said this about being born again. It's official MC, uh, MCU. Yeah. Instead of being an MCU. Yeah, I agree with that. That's probably a better explanation of where we're going to be. Um, here we go. Here's our writers, Jill Blankenship. Why well, I know that name? What do I know her from? We've looked her. We've looked her up before. And Greeny Godfrey, uh, CW writer. That's right. We brought in a CW writer, the Tomorrow People, and an Arrowverse writer. Godfrey did Legends of Tomorrow. Um, yeah. So she's she's a CW. They're they're a CW writer. Yeah, so you're going to get, so you got a female writer, Grainy Godfrey. I wonder if Grainy is on Twitter. You find out a lot about a person when you search them up on Twitter. Right, you really, really do. Because I, for some reason, people think Twitter is like a bubble and they can behave like they normally want, like they really can really just be themselves on Twitter. I don't totally know why that is. Um, Twitter's like this weird fake universe of things that are actually happening. So that's your writer. She she is your da daredevil writer. She definitely worked on Secret Invasion. Yep, she's a part of the writer strike. Yep. Well, if she's a fan of Steve Kerr, that's enough. You know where you're what you're gonna what you're gonna feel there. Let's see. I was trying to see if there was comments about Daredevil. You you would think that see, this is all just her retweeting stuff. It's all the same kind of stuff. Yeah, she's not very active on Twitter. All right, Jill Blankenship. Why do we know Blankenship's name? Is she on one of the other shows? Oh, she worked on Naomi. <laughs> she worked on Arrow and Naomi. So your Daredevil is being written by CW people for Disney, um, trying to spin it as being a fourth season, but not look anything like where the first three seasons. So we're going to reboot it with CW people. And then have the stunt people told, by the way, we don't want it to look anything like that. Wow. That's that's nuts. So let's go back to the last comment. There's a couple other uh, things here real quick. Um, because he 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 just does so well. He's just so good. I think the casting was perfect. I think every showrunner, every person who worked on that show was a genius. It's an incredible experience. And in my opinion, like most people agree on, it's Marvel's best streaming show, which is really scary because it's really not Marvel. It's just Marvel outsourced it to someone else. They just got lucky having, you know, like Drew Goddard and, and um, people like that that were involved. There were just these passionate people about this character. 
I think that Charlie and Vincent absolutely crushed it. Yeah. I think every person who works on that show, absolutely. Not. By the way, we don't talk enough about Charlie Cox and the outrage of when he was Matt Murdock, because when he was cast off Boardwalk Empire to be uh, Matt Murdock and Daredevil, there was there was outrage. We talk a lot about casting outrage and things like that. We forget about Charlie. People were not happy about it. I was like, he's pretty good on Boardwalk Empire. We'll see how it goes. Bruce Bruce tried nothing but um, just lots of praise for Netflix. Like, look at how he phrases this. I think that now the MCU, the MCU has taken over the character. They are really, really hurting it. See how look at the phrasing of that. MCU has taken over the character. If you watch She-Hulk, it turned Daryl into a cartoon. Amen, brother. It's all animated and it looks bad. I love CG to enhance real movement, but if you don't have any real movement, it's just like a cartoon CG, no weight to it. Oh, so on point. So on point. Um, what made Daredevil so good was it was visceral. Yes. Yes. Um, just enhancing a movement. It's live action. You never match how live action actually works. Um, Oh, he's he's saying Echo. He's heard Echo is just as bad as She Hulk. Uh, I heard they were giving it the Batgirl treatment. Wow, they're going to do it, but they can't because of the writer strike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They made it already. So because of the writer, so yeah. This has been a this has been an ongoing thing about Echo. Um, I know we're getting off topic a little bit, but Echo is a Daredevil villain, by the way. Um, Echo is so bad they were talking about canning it, um, but with the writer strike, there's no content. So what they're going to do in November, in between two of their other projects, they're just going to dump Echo. So it's kind of like a Netflix dump. So it's going to be everything is going to be available in like one day. They just know it's crap. So they're just going to take their lumps. It'll be over in a couple of weeks, and that's it. Just move on. Wow. Um, nobody who worked on seasons one, two, or three went back. They really, truly don't want it to be anything like Marvel Netflix. A Netflix Daredevil. So nobody worked on the original series other than the cast they're bringing back. Wow. Marvel's making a big mistake. Hmm. Wow. Cox had talked about not seeing anything. It's like we'll be a new beginning, whatever. It's all different, whatever. This is all that kind of stuff. So uh I don't know. I'm telling you guys. Um I expect this to be one of the more painful things to wake up normies. I'm looking very, I'm actually looking forward to reviewing Daredevil because it's, it's really among my favorite characters. Again, it's, it's the Batman thing. It's the real guy kind of stuff. I'm actually rereading Marvel Knights, basically the, the second, the second volume. And I don't really foresee that they have the, the, the weight and the patience to write the good enough stories and adapt it well. Because I got to be honest, if I were to do a Daredevil show, I would really be interested in doing like a traditional TV show, like 23 episodes. I would really love to see it drawn out, um, you know, spend some time, develop some characters, you know, tell some little mini stories, a one-off uh, episode, things like that. Really the traditional uh, TV writing. Really get get in there and really get into something that's that's really really meaty and interesting and good, and then you have like, you know, two seasons, right? Because you could do like a mid season break in season one. You have you know twelve episodes and take a break and do like ten episodes, something like that. You know, do do you do like a you know fall season and a spring season like a normal television schedule used to be, and you would just you could just dominate during that time frame. And you would, but you need writers. You need some really, really good writers because you have all the cast. You have the elements there. Enough of these directors have enough experience. You got people from Mayor Kingstown and stuff involved. It's not going to be. The, it's not going to be them that's going to be the problem. It's going to be the writing, the visual effects, and the lack of respect for the source material. So, born again, I'm telling you guys. Hmm. And you guys tell me where I'm wrong, but that's not what I'm seeing. I'm seeing Doomsday on the front. I'm seeing Doomsday. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right?